a moth which has been bred by man and can no longer fly. The eggs are hatched and become worms which go through four light sleeping periods. In 24 to 25 days, they grow by an astonishing 14,000 times. The worm turns into a larva which spews a delicate filament to make a cocoon about itself to shelter it during the pupa stage. Man reels this thread for his clothes and adornment. The mulberry leaves, which have been sheaved during the winter, are untied with the coming of spring. The silk-growing farmers become suddenly busy. The earth awakes from its slumber. Life returns to raise the mulberry. The mulberry was once a very ordinary tree growing in the fields and mountains. Man improved and planted it in farms. This insect, which feeds on the mulberry, is very close to the silkworm, but is exterminated as a pest. Fujimi village in Gumma prefecture, some 100 kilometers north of Tokyo, is a typical silk-growing community. There are an estimated 440,000 silk growing farmers in Japan at present. This is 8% of the total farming household. These silk growing farmers go to the neighborhood shrine for the right of the long nosed goblin to pray for a good harvest. Fujimi village started silk growing some 200 years ago. It was interrupted during World War II because farmers concentrated on food production. At present, about 1,400 households raise silkworms and make cocoons three to five times a year. The farmers raise the young silkworms at a collective farm located in each district. The Fari farm of Fujimi village is one of them. A man called a breeder distributes the hatched eggs to each silkworm raising community. The raising of the spring silkworm starts in early May. <laughs> The silkworm is still covered by downy hair and is only about three millimeters in length. The silkworm eats the young soft leaves and grows day by day. It eats only the mulberry leaf. The silkworm is still young. It is cold outside. When did man discover the work of the silkworm and create silk? As far back as 3,300 years ago, the words mulberry, silkworm and silk filament were inscribed on the bones of animals during the Ying period in China. Silk found sticking to a copper jar among the remains of the Ying period is believed to be the oldest extant silk in the world.
the history of silk goes still further back to 1,000 years before the Ying period, or 20 to 25 centuries BC. A cocoon believed to have some relation with man has been dug up in the village of Si Ying in China's Shanxi province. The silk growing method which originated in China during the Ying period was subsequently introduced to other countries. By the first century, it was widely carried out in and around Nangpo province in the Korean peninsula. The oldest silk in Japan was discovered in the Tateiwa remains in Izuka city in northern Kyushu. This site is believed to date back to the first century, or possibly a hundred years earlier. A sword was found among these remains. Fibers sticking to this sword are believed to be Japanese in origin. Thus, the origin of silk growing in Japan dates back 2,000 years. Subsequently, gorgeous fabrics came from the Asian mainland. In the 4th century, Koreans were invited to Japan, where they settled in Kyoto and taught silk growing and weaving. Along with rice growing, sericulture is the oldest farming activity in Japan. The silkworm is protected from the cold and disease and grows in safety. The silkworms hatched from the eggs weigh 20 times heavier than at birth in only four to five days time. The bed is expanded and made more comfortable as they grow. The mulberry leaves are increased when necessary. Four people chosen from among the 24 households of the Fukpari Sericultural Association are responsible for the raising of these silkworms. They are all heads of families experienced in growing silk. The wives work in rotation according to the instructions of these four men. All the people raise the silkworms. There is no competition. Sometimes there is a common danger. It is still cold along the mountains in mid-May. Frost appears in some places at pre-dawn when the mercury dips to its lowest. It freezes on the mulberry leaves as water drops. The farmers make a fire to warm the mulberry fields and smoke away the frost. The villagers challenge their common danger and protect the mulberry trees. Even so, nature sometimes defeats the farmers. They are obliged to bury the young silkworms that they have raised so carefully. The silkworm has grown 50 times in only eight days since birth. It eats a lot of mulberry. In two more days, the silkworms will be distributed among the farmers.
the farmers are busy preparing for the day, now very close, when the silkworms grown at the sericultural farm will be distributed to them. The Nakajima family has increased the number of spring silkworms to an unprecedented level. The head of the family, Kazuo Nakajima, consulted the entire family in making the decision. His wife, Fuji, spoke out most strongly for increasing the number. His son's wife, Aki, is familiar with silk growing because she has raised silkworms at her home since she was a young girl. She, too, called for increasing the number. And so it was finally decided that they would raise 100 grams of spring silkworm eggs. This is the largest quantity in the Fari district. The old woman of the family, Grandmother Bing, becomes restless at this time of the year. Saburo, Kazuo's eldest son, is conscientious and likes to help others. in Fujimi village as May comes. The Nakajimas too are ready to welcome the silkworms. The silkworms which have been raised for 10 days at the collective farm are distributed to each household. Each family will now raise the silkworms on their own mulberry leaves. The silkworms have been raised collectively under the same conditions. Now, for the next 20 days, each family will raise them in its own way. Skill and experience will count from now on. Silkworms are growing well this year, but spring was late in coming. Silkworms are very vulnerable to cold. When the weather is cold, their growth slows down, which means that they make cocoons late too. The longer they take to grow, the more mulberry leaves are needed. The mulberry fields are not big. The farmers cannot afford to waste the mulberry. The important thing is to feed only as much mulberry as is necessary for the silkworms to produce many cocoons. For this purpose, the leaves are cut thin to enable the young silkworms to eat them with ease. The winter was very cold, and neuralgia is still troubling Beng. Yet she cannot afford to be idle when the entire family is so busy. She still has the strength that enabled her to raise eight children. When Kazuo resumed silk growing after the war, he decided to earn more than half of the year's total living expenses from it. Some investment was necessary to achieve this goal. He built this silk growing hut in 1965, 
being the first to do so in his district. Until then, the silkworms were raised in the main house. But the people had little room for themselves. The young people disliked the idea of raising silkworms in their home. So Kazuo built this hut. He wanted to raise the silkworms only in the hut. But his scheme was not successful because of the rapid rise in prices and the cost of living. He had to increase the silkworms to offset the rise in the cost of living. And he had to grow the mulberry trees for these silkworms. Why not build another hut? But that would cost money. Besides, he'd have to use part of the mulberry field if he were to build another hut. Both Kazuo and his son Saburo decided to continue as they were for some time yet. The silkworms grow rapidly. Their beds must be made larger so that they can grow in comfort. The silkworms hatched from the eggs grow suddenly after 15 days. They have grown approximately 5,000 times. A larger place is obviously needed. Both Fuji and Aki, the wives, have also grown up with silkworms since their childhood. Fuji is lonely when there are no silkworms. She is restless unless mulberry trees are growing around her home. The Nakajima family is raising 100 grams of silkworm eggs this spring. That means 220,000 silkworms altogether. The Nakajimas have one hectare of mulberry fields. The mulberry leaves from these fields are fed to 100 grams of silkworms in spring. In all, they will raise five batches of silkworms through into the autumn. In terms of eggs, this means 300 grams, or 700,000 silkworms altogether. The vital thing for a silk-growing farmer is how best to make use of his limited mulberry field so that the maximum quantity of mulberry leaves can be obtained to feed the silkworms and thereby produce raw silk. In the last three days before it spins a cocoon, the silkworm eats 60% of the mulberry leaves it eats in its entire lifetime. Picking the mulberry leaves becomes a waste of labor. Entire branches are given. The silkworm eats voraciously. It is a battle for time between the mulberry-eating silkworm and the mulberry-cutting man. The farmer cultivates the mulberry and feeds it to the silkworm. This work is repeated several times in a year. The mulberry tree produces leaves only for half a year from May, and only when the sun is shining does it produce the green leaves.
The weather continues to be quite cool this spring, and it is not the best of conditions for the silkworm. But the silkworms grow quite well. The silkworm beds are subjected to a growing weight of mulberry leaves. Tension increases among the farmers as the feeding process progresses. As the rainy season approaches in late May, Cuswell becomes concerned whether the mulberry in his field alone will be enough. He goes to buy more from his relatives. On the 24th day after hatching, the last feeding is done. The silkworm has grown about 14,000 times since it hatched from an egg. It stops eating. Its body is full of the glutinous filament substance. the silkworms are heavier than in past years. Saburo's eldest son, Makoto, is attending an agricultural high school near his home. The battle with the mulberry is over, and the family can spend a day of leisure for a change. Before spewing the filaments, the silkworm shows a slight change of colour. It becomes semi-transparent as if it contained wax. This is the stage before transformation into a pupa. And now, a new battle with the silkworm has started. The silkworms, which have ceased eating, start moving to spew the filament. A new movement has started inside their bodies. The silkworms are put into their nests, or holders as they are called. The cocoon spinning starts. All the silkworms must be placed in their holders quickly. Experienced though everyone is, this is extremely busy work. The arms and fingers become numb, the back aches. Silkworms 
start spewing the filaments. They intertwine and form a mound. The family normally receives its guests in this room, but today it has become a workshop. Makoto did not go to school today, for it's a very special day for the Nakajimas. He didn't like silkworms before, but recently he feels some attachment for them. The rotating holder became popular after the war. Each silkworm enters the frame and makes its cocoon. The Nakajimas adopted this method, although it's a little costly. The farmers used this straw holder in the past. Now it is used as an additional holder in the spring and autumn when the number of silkworms greatly increases. There are six people at work, including Grandmother Beng, and Makoto. It took a whole day for the entire family to pick the 220,000 silkworms from the mulberry leaves and place them in the holder. The silkworms climb to find their nests. The upper part of the holder becomes heavy and turns. The silkworms climb again and the holder turns again and so it goes on. The Nakajimas have some paddy fields which have been handed down from their ancestors. Even when silk growing is not going well, they can subsist so long as they grow rice. The paddies have been increased from generation to generation. Rice growing cannot be neglected. Man found the silkworm in its wild state, increased its numbers, improved it, and created a worm that spews filament. Man improved the mulberry found in the fields and mountains, and created a mulberry that could be cultivated on a farm. The mulberry is eaten by the silkworm, and is transformed into a white filament in the silkworm's body. The silkworm eats only mulberry leaves, nothing else. Man made the silkworm, and without man to feed it, the silkworm no doubt would die. With man to take care of it, a single silkworm can produce 1,500 meters of white filament. The peculiar characteristic of silk is born already at the time the silkworm spews the filament. Each fibre is nearly triangular in shape and creates the effect of a prism. Its brilliance is not the only reason why silk is regarded as valuable. Rather, the reason lies in its feel. The filament is supple yet strong. It preserves warmth and is light. Chemical textiles have still to attain the feel of silk.
The silkworm spins a cocoon in about one day after getting into the holder. The silkworm turns into a larva and spends about a week inside the cocoon. During this sleep, man kills the larva and takes the filament. About 37 to 38 kilograms of cocoon are obtained from 10 grams of eggs. The important thing is how to increase this output. Sometimes two silkworms spin a single cocoon. This is useless because when the machine spins the yarn, the filaments do not unravel well. Shipping such cocoons would bring a bad reputation to the farmers of the Fari district. Saburo does not want that to happen. It is Kazuo's job to remove the fluff that appears when the silkworm spins the cocoon. Only then is the final product ready. The Nakajima family has always produced nice round cocoon balls. The cocoons are ready to be sold tomorrow. Beng is more familiar with the straw holder on which she has worked since her girlhood. But cocoons made with the straw holder sell cheaper these days than those made with the rotating holder. Beng finds this very strange. A single cocoon produces approximately 1,500 meters of filament. The white slender filament is twisted and reeled in a given thickness. silk and various silk products were once a major export of Japan. It can be said that raw silk gave Japan the foundation of its economic development. It is dyed in mud. It is coloured with dyes obtained from trees and grass and becomes even more beautiful.
the technique of silk processing developed with the history of silk growing. Man raised the silkworm, processed the filament that came from its body and used it himself. Weaving and dyeing became separate and independent crafts and produced a beauty peculiarly Japanese. Silk became all the more valuable. It was a natural blessing. Silk gave beauty to people's lives. <laughs> the silkworms did a very good job this spring. The 100 grams of eggs produced 40 kilograms of cocoons. Man has raised silkworms and grown the mulberry from ancient times. The mulberry passed through the silkworm's body and changed into a beautiful filament. This was a valuable product of man's wisdom. Man discovered a strange energy in a living thing and used it to produce clothing. In olden times as well as today, the sun, the air, water and the earth helped the delicate work of the silkworm and the mulberry. They have thrived on the natural resources of this planet. It is the farmers who have used the resources fruitfully. We call that effort of theirs agriculture.